All right, we're joined now by Ryan Divish, the new Seattle Mariners beat writer for the Seattle Times. Ryan, first of all, congratulations on the job. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, so it's kind of crazy in Mariner land right now. All these rumors today that Robinson Cano is suddenly in Seattle, possibility. What's the latest on that situation? Yeah, Robinson Cano is in Seattle, according to most sources and according to a few flight records. He is here with his agent, Jay-Z. Uh, and other representatives of, of Rock Nation Sports is what Jay-Z Sports Management and companies call it. And also membership of our, some representatives of Creative Artist Agency, which is also kind of the parent company of that sports agency. So they're here meeting with the Mariners tonight, and I assume a little bit tomorrow morning. Uh, their flight got in about 6 o'clock Seattle time, and uh, they're just kind of try and hammer out a deal or at least hear what the Mariners have to offer. This is the first time Cano has been face-to-face -face with the Mariners and the Mariners management. What kind of numbers are you hearing for a potential offer from the Mariners right now? Well, it's just depending on what time of the day you look, it all seems to be different. I mean, this morning it was 10 years at $240 million, then it was under $200 million, then it was back to $220 million. And really tonight multiple sources are kind of reporting that Nine years, $225 million is the offer on the table. Uh, nothing that I've heard said differently at this point. So something right around in there. It's, it's always been over $200. I think for the Mariners to generate interest from Cano that it had to be over $200 million for him to, to listen. Now, I was reading earlier tonight, uh, Fox Sports' Ken Rosenthal had an article saying that this would be a dumb move for the Mariners. It would be a dumb move for Robinson Cano. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Well, I don't know if I could call picking up $225 million dumb if I was Robinson Cano. I think he could argue with that a little bit. Uh, and, you know, with the Mariners as well. I, I think Ken is looking at it from a very kind of small perspective. And, you know, we don't operate in a vacuum around here. And I think for the Mariners, they have to go out and do something to change the perception of this organization this this ownership and management group within not only the Mariners fan base but all of baseball. Right now, the Mariners are a moribund franchise that people look down on. They've become a punchline to the jokes. So in their eyes, if they go out and show baseball and show their fans, hey, look, we went out and got Robinson Cano. We're going to get these guys. We're making an effort to win. That, that would help with their support. Um, in Ken's case, he's looking at – everything that Robinson Cano likes and wants. He loves New York. He wants the big marketing. He wants all of that. He wants to stay a Yankee. So for him to come here, it kind of goes against everything he said. So I, I think I understand where Ken's coming from, but there's too many sides. There's no black and white issue on right or wrong in this. It's kind of how you're perceived in so many different uh, kind of shades of gray in this that to sit there and say one side is right and one side is wrong is kind of false. And it seemed that one part, or the main part of his argument there, was that the Mariners are not one player away from contention. They still have other pieces to fill. But the Mariners' payroll seems to be going up this year. So what other pieces could they add in addition to Cano if they're able to make that happen? Yeah, no, I agree with him in that, that Cano doesn't solve all their problems. I mean, they obviously, I mean, you look at their outfield right now, other than Michael Saunders, you really don't feel comfortable with anybody out there. And even Michael Saunders could be construed as a fourth outfielder at best. So, no, they do need to add some people around them. You just don't go spend all this money on Cano and don't supplement it. So they could go out and legitimately even sign somebody like Sin Su Chu. I mean, the way the money is set up, uh, and if you backload Cano's contract, you would have money to play with. Really, right now, the only major contracts the Mariners are under are Felix Hernandez for $22 million this year and Astasio Akuma for about $6.5 million. The rest of the guys are all under kind of slotted payrolls because they're under club control. So that doesn't add up to a whole lot. The Mariners have close to $50 million to play with. So if you got Cano and paid him $20 million this year and backloaded the contract, you still have $30 million possibly to pay to play with to get other guys. Another deal that's been kind of rumored was a possible trade for David Price. This stuff, this information, a lot of it is coming from the Rays side. Uh, they're looking to unload David Price. He has two years left on his contract, and it's been pretty clear that he wants to test the free agent market. You know, for the Mariners to do that, they likely would have to go to Taiwan Walker, and a lot of people are hesitant to do that because you only get – price for two years and because of the potential for Walker to be a, a real great pitcher in the major leagues. Yeah, well, you mentioned giving up Taiwan Walker. If the Mariners are able to sign Cano, now that puts Nick Franklin out of a position. 
What would the Mariners do with Nick Franklin, Dustin Ackley, if they signed Cano? I think regardless of whether they signed Cano or not, going into this offseason, the Mariners were thinking hard that maybe they would trade one of those young infielders, even Brad Miller possibly, because they just have so many guys at that one position. And I don't know that they're real comfortable with Ackley as an everyday left fielder. So I think they were going to try and package maybe Franklin or Ackley and possibly James Paxton in a deal to either get a bat or get a starting pitcher to help them. So I, I did think that one of those guys, Franklin or Ackley, probably wouldn't be with this organization going forward. And, and you know, if they sign Cano, they're definitely not going to be a part of it. Yeah. Really quickly here, Ryan, how high do you think the Mariners payroll is going to go this year? I talked with uh, Howard Lincoln uh, earlier, and on the record he said that the payroll won't go down and then he believed it would go up, the payroll budget. Uh, a year ago, they budgeted $95 million. They didn't spend all of it. They spent about $84 million, but they budgeted $95 million. So for them to get to $100 million, I don't think that's improbable. I think that's probably a number they're comfortable with, with the addition, you know, with, with the purchase of Root Sports as their own regional sports network. They will have money to play with down the road, so I think that that's something they're comfortable with. And they know they need to spend money. I mean, the perception of the Mariners right now is not good amongst their own fans, so I think that they know they have to go out and spend money and try and make some moves. All right, Ryan, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. Not a problem. All right, John, well, exciting times for the Mariners for a team that haven't had a lot of those in the last 10 years. Back to you.